So you're new to Genshin, you do a 10 point on the current banner, and while you don't get a 5 star, you do get 4 star Dory. Now what do you get with Dory besides probably the... Now what do you get with Dory besides probably the most forgettable Electro character in all of Genshin? Well, Dory is a Claymore-wielding Electro character who can actually battery almost any other character in the game. And in this video, we're going to look at everything that you may need to know as a new Genshin player or just a player that's new to Dory. So we're going to look at her normal attacks, we're going to look at her skill, we're going to look at her burst, we're going to look at all of that and hopefully give you all the information that you need to know. So just like we do in every single one of these videos, we're going to look at the current build of the current character that we are currently using. One, it might be a look at a future build, which in this case kind of is, maybe. Um, the other reason would be in case my character is hitting way more than yours or supporting way more than yours. It might be the artifact set, it might be the weapon. This will give you a very good uh, something to judge against. So, my Dory is level 20 out of 40. Her max HP is 6,800, uh, attack 557, and elemental mastery 101. So like I said, not necessarily an end build kind of thing. So her crit split is 12.7 over 65. That's not impressive, but her energy recharge at 234 is, which is why I said this is kind of like a half build. Um, if we go to her weapon, she is running a level 70 Favonius Greatsword. I don't normally do this. I just threw this stuff on her. And she's running a two-piece VG, two-piece emblem. So I, I just took some artifacts from some characters. She is C3. The only thing that that's going to mean is on her C1, uh, her skill is going to have like an extra round, which we'll talk about. Um, C2 is that whenever her burst heals uh, one of your characters that is on the field, it will just do a little bit of extra damage. That's it. That's the only two differences. It's not going to change her gameplay that much. And her talents are 1-1-4. One, one, so now with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's talk about her normal attacks, her charge attack, her skill, and her burst. Okay, so first we're going to talk about her normal attacks and her charged attacks. So her normal attacks are going to be a three consecutive hit. Nothing too impressive. The only thing is that like the little genie is the one actually swinging the claymore. Dory is not. Okay, so now we're going to look at her skill. And what her skill is going to do is she's going to pull out this genie lamp and she's going to fire off an electro shot. It is also going to send out these little extra shots or balls of lightning and they're going to seek out enemies and is going to hit another enemy. It is going to also apply electro and her C1 makes this three, not two. Uh, if you're C0, it's going to have two balls of lightning, not three. So now we're going to look at her burst and her burst. She is going to place down this genie lamp and it is going to heal whatever character you have on the field. It has to be your on field character. And you notice that there's this line that is drawn between the genie lamp and your on field character. This line, if it touches anybody, is going to apply electro. So it is going to be very, very good at a couple of things. So another thing that this line does is that any character that it is attached to is going to be continuously regenerating energy to that character. So if we use like Kale's burst and we just let that go off, we don't really do much of anything else. We don't like use her skill to regenerate energy. It is still going to be regenerating energy down here. As you can see at her burst marker, I guess you call that thing. You will see that it is just kind of continuously ticking up. That is from Dory's burst being connected to Kale. If this line touches another enemy, it will apply Electro, meaning it is very, very good for keeping the Quicken Aura on enemies. So if you have a character like Dendro Traveler or Kale, then you will be able to keep the Quicken Aura on them fairly regularly and consistently using Dory, as well as Dory energizing or batterying your other characters and healing. Something else with this line of Electro is that Dory can trigger Hyper Blooms. Now that is a very non-standard build for Dory, but she can do it off field and with her skill. So you can have her burst up, have it connected to your Hydro Driver or your Dendro Driver, creating blooms and then just running in circles around the Genie Lamp, triggering the Hyper Bloom. So you can do a lot with Dory. And while we won't touch further on it in the TikTok with the Quicken and the Hyper Bloom. I do talk about it a lot more in the YouTube video, so do be sure to go check that out. Okay, so now it's time to look at a beginner artifact set. For a beginner artifact set, you are going to have a couple of options depending on the build. But 
four piece exile is going to be your best way to go especially because her utility lies in her burst having this extra energy recharge is going to be very very good with the two piece and the four piece is going to just help supply energy to your other uh characters so again this is just doing another thing that dory does really well which is battering everybody else this is going to help battery everybody else even further now if you are wanting to run hyper bloom then just run four piece instructor set gets up your elemental mastery gets up everybody's elemental mastery upon causing a reaction and which is how you want to build your electro trigger for the hyper blooms. You just want to build straight up elemental mastery for the main stats on these artifacts. If you're doing a standard build with like exile, then you are going to be running like HP percent or energy recharge sands. You're going to be running HP percent goblet and either HP or healing circlet for a hyper bloom set. You are going to be running straight EM across the board. You're not going to be worried about the energy recharge or the healing. You're just going to be running EM. So for a beginner friendly weapon, we have a three star fair shadow. And while you can't really use the passive all that much, getting her HP up is going to be very, very good for Dory. If you want her to focus on healing. Now you do have four star event weapon, ultimate overlorded mega blah, 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 ultimate overlords, mega magic sword, which gets up energy recharge. Again, the passive is not going to be too great because it gets up attack and you're not really going to be worried about her damage, um, but the energy recharge can be very, very good. Now you do have the craftable um, Inazuma weapon, which can also be good for energy recharge and it does get her damage up with her skill. But if you're at Inazuma, you might have a better weapon. If you're gonna be running her for Hyper Bloom, you have Rain Slasher and you have Blood Tainted Great Sword. Blood Tainted Great Sword does have a slightly higher elemental mastery and the passive is gonna be good, but Rain Slasher also has a good passive for damage. However, if you're doing Hyper Bloom, you just want as much EM as you can get. Red blunt a great sword is a three star. You should have plenty of them. Now we're going to look at a party for Dory. Now, the way that this is going to work is that I'm going to make a party with only free characters, only the characters that the game gives you. So we have Dory, we have Kale, Dendro Traveler and Barbara. Now, this is going to be a quicken or a quick bloom team because of Barbara. But we're going to mainly be having Kale and Dendro Traveler do our damage with spread and aggravate reactions thanks to Dory's burst. So essentially the way that this is going to work is we are going to want Dory's burst up as much as possible, right? So that way we can have that line of electro connecting, giving energy recharge, but keeping the quicken aura, the electro and dendro reaction on the enemies. So that way we can then just use dendro traveler and Kale to do most of our damage. Every now and then when Barbara's skill is ready because it has like a uh, it has several seconds to where the cooldown is still going, but the skill can't be used. It's not up anymore. So every now and then whenever we have access to Barbara's skill, we will put it up to create some blooms, allowing Dory's burst and skill to trigger those blooms. So every single time that we can have Dory's burst up, we want it up and we want to have that electro line for running around, keeping the quick and aura, triggering hyper blooms when we have her, uh, when we have Barbara's skill available, but we don't want to use Barbara as an on-field hydro driver. We really just want that there um, to create some blooms because if you don't have Dory built full EM, hyper blooms not going to be doing that much, but it's just going to be adding a little bit in there, right? Now with this party, you can take out and change a lot of the characters. Kale, I'll hate them. Dendro Traveler, um, another Dendro character. <laughs> you can take out Barbara and you can swap her to another Electro character like Fischl or Kuki Shinobu or Beto, who is insanely energy hungry and needs a battery to function well. Now, Yaimiko has a very high energy requirement. Same thing with Raiden. Raiden is her own battery, though. I wouldn't put Raiden with Dory, but Yaimiko could definitely do it because she has such a high energy cost. So if you don't want to use Barbara or if you want to add more damage overall, then you can just take Barbara out and swap in any other electric character. That is going to be it for this video. If you have any questions, do be sure to leave it down in the comments. Myself or somebody else, be sure to answer it, and I will see you in the next video.